Let's use gradient maps and text to turn our photo into a complete poster design. So I have my photo open in a new document in Photoshop. The dimensions are 1080 by 1350. This is a photo I just got this past weekend in Denver, super scenic venue. So really the first step to any good design is just make sure the photography is cool and compelling. Players are all in pretty good focus with this obviously nice mountain and sky background. So getting right into it, go to your adjustment layers and go to gradient map. This is going to change all the colors in your design to whatever colors are in this gradient map. So when you open the gradient map editor, just by clicking on the gradient up on the right side, you can see these preset drop downs of like all sorts of different colors and different color combinations. We're going to go to this iridescent panel and I like this green pink and purple gradient map. So I'm gonna hit okay. Obviously right now it has the lightest color set to the dark value in the gradient map editor. So what we wanna do is switch this all around just by clicking this reverse button up here. And you can see now it's the purple that are the dark parts of the image. Uh, the pink are the midtones, and then this seafoam green is the highlights, which kind of creates a cool contrast while still allowing you to make out most of the components in the photo. So I'm gonna size this image down a little bit and move it down just by transforming it with Command T and just dragging down from this edge. I wanna leave more room at the top because I know we're gonna have big text up over everything. And let's make sure these players are centered as well. And now you can see like this faint line, this crease in the design. I'm gonna get rid of that just by adding a mask to the photo, clicking our mask icon, going to my brush tool, just hit B on your keyboard. And then with a soft brush, you can set the hardness down to zero. And then bracket keys are the shortcut for making it bigger and smaller. We'll take like a soft big brush and just brush in black up here at the top of the image. So we have a smooth transition from the photo to the background. Now you might wanna edit your photo further depending on what the gradient map gives you. You can fine tune how the gradient map is affecting your photo just by adjusting these dials in here. Like if I move this green over, it's gonna make the green a little bit more prominent in the design. Same thing with the pink. And you can move the purple in as well to kind of darken those purple tones. And something like this feels pretty good. Now let's do our main text up at the top. We're gonna type out D-line in a new layer with our type tool. And this is an image of three players on the New York Empire D-line, that is their defense. And I'm using the font Termina Black for this like big, bold approach. And I'm bringing up my guides, which the shortcut to guides is Command Apostrophe. You can turn those on and off. I just wanna line it up with this two box margin from the left. And let's make this text effect where we expand out the E. E's are kind of cool to stretch. To do that, I'm gonna first duplicate our D-line text and just hide the one underneath in case we have to come back to it. And then right clicking on this layer, let's go down to convert to shape. This is going to allow us, if you hit A on your keyboard for the direct selection tool, it's allowing us to now like drag individual points around from the shape. So if we just wanted to drag the ends of this E to the right, you can just like click and drag again with your direct selection tool. And then once those points are highlighted, you can drag outward. And I'm holding shift when I'm dragging that keeps everything aligned in a straight line. So let's look back at our grids and drag this one all the way out to again, that same two box distance from the right edge. We have two boxes from the left edge. And I'm just gonna zoom in and let's make all of these even just for fun or as even as possible. So we'll drag out the top and the middle of the E as well. So now we zoom back out, we've got this stretched text effect. Let's also blur parts of this text. So I'm gonna click on our layer and then convert it for smart filters. Then we'll go down to Blur, Blur Gallery, Field Blur. Field Blur allows you to like create blur points basically of different values. So like just by clicking and then adjusting the blur, you can move this around. And so like this part of the D is not very blurred, but if we wanted to blur this edge of it, 
we could and can add more points like this just to blur different parts of the text. So totally up to you how you want to do this. I just kind of like how it gives it kind of a somewhat random but funky feel. So let's kind of reduce the blur on the inside of the E and something like that we'll go with. So I don't know exactly what these posters are called. You may have seen something that looks like this in the past. It's basically like a photo with some kind of gradient map coloration going over the whole thing and then oftentimes has like a big bold title and then there's also like a lot of tiny smaller elements. So we're gonna add some like smaller text in certain parts of the design and work around our photo. So we're just gonna add things where I think they make sense. So like at the very top here we can add a text layer and just type out New York Empire 2023 and I'm gonna center this and let's make this a 12 point font. We can use a slightly lighter font, maybe medium is good. And then I'm just gonna drag this up again, making it so it's two boxes from the top, maintaining that margin. And then we can spread out this text as well. Maybe we want this a little bolder, like bold font maybe. Okay, and then I'm gonna keep spreading it out until I wanna line up this N with the left side of the L. To me, that just looks even and consistent. So something like that looks good to me. And let's make the main text a little bit closer. So I'm just gonna move up one arrow key holding space to, to jump up this big text a little bit closer. And we can make a sort of subtitle under D-line. So let's make a new text layer again. Let's draw out this box, you'll see why I'm doing this, but I'm just keeping it exactly even with the width of our title, D-line. And I'm gonna type out defense wins championships. And we'll reduce this spacing to zero. Let me move this down so you can see it. Uh, this font size, we can go up a little bit. Let's go to 24. And then when you change the paragraph style to whatever this rightmost thing is called, justify all. It'll basically spread out all the words on a given line and make sure it fits the width of the text box that we've drawn out. So you'll see like the defense jump to the left side, championships jump to the right side, and then wins is spaced evenly in between the two. Uh, this one I'm gonna go back to medium as the weight and we can line this up a little bit more precisely like so. So the next thing we're gonna do is put a little paragraph of text up in the top right. I like how the mountain kind of makes a natural division in this photo. And so we can use it as a sort of guide of where we wanna put our next text. I'm gonna target this area up top and then we're also gonna target this pink area of the mountain to the left. So first with a paragraph, I wrote out this paragraph about the New York Empire defense. So first I'm gonna draw out this text box, and then let's go to our handy text edit tool, which I've copied and pasted this text into. Copy that in, and we'll make this the smaller font size, so 12, same size as kind of our, our top title right there. And if you just hit the check mark, we've got this smaller text in a neat paragraph. Again, the justification is that same justify all on the far right of the paragraph panel. So if you made it like justify left, it'd look like that. I like the justify all because it kind of keeps everything in a very specific rectangle. I want to position D line a little bit more precisely in between the top and bottom text. So let's move this up just a little bit. And then with this paragraph, I want to keep it kind of equidistant from this part of the mountain and this part of the text, the bottom of the text. So. Maybe move it down a little bit, but that looks pretty good to me. Now let's have some text go down in a column on the left side. Again, a new layer, T for your type tool. Just gonna click once. We don't have to make a text box out of this, but for this text, I've written out the names of all of the players that have played predominantly on the Empire D-line. So I'm just gonna paste those in here. And then the three players on this graphic Antoine Davis, Ben Yacht, and Marquez Brownlee, we are gonna bold those names. So Brownlee, let's make to black. Davis, 
switch the font size or font weight to black and then yacht as well, black. And then let's align this again from that two box margin. And let's make the starting point of it even with the bottom of this paragraph. So I'm just gonna drag this whole thing over so we can align it exactly, so like that. And then holding shift, just clicking and dragging, that'll keep it exactly even and then we can move it back to that two box margin. So I like the text kind of picking up where this leaves off in terms of the vertical placement. Last thing we'll do is add some finishing touches. So let's make a new folder on top of everything. We'll call it finishing. And first let's bring this whole thing into camera raw filter. So I'm gonna make a new layer and then the shortcut command option shift E. That's gonna basically stamp the entire design as we're currently looking at it onto its own layer. And then if I go to filter, convert for smart filters, we can now take this layer and then go up to filter, camera raw filter, and make some master adjustments to the whole thing. So we can mess with the exposure, the contrast, maybe we bring the highlights down. You can see it's not doing a ton, the highlights and the shadows, because these colors are already kind of in the mid-tone range, but you can still play with texture, clarity, even add some vignetting just in the corners could be a nice effect. So let's leave it like there. So you can see a quick before and after the camera raw filter just gives it a little bit more detail before we keep adding some more effects. Let's add a grain layer next. I'm gonna make a new layer, select the whole thing with command A, and then W, go into my quick selection tool. Let's right click in the middle, go to fill, and then fill it with 50% gray. And now going up to filter, convert for smart filters, and then filter, noise, add noise. Sure, we'll do 15%, hit OK, and then switch this blend mode to hard light. And that's very grainy. We can lower this to something like 40%. Let's also add a texture on top of this. So I'm gonna go to my finder and drag in this couch texture that I actually got in another video and I'm gonna position it about there. And then we'll switch this blend mode to screen so we can get the white parts of the couch kind of showing through and giving it sort of a like finely striped look to the whole thing. And then lastly, let's add a color lookup. So if you go to color lookup and we're gonna do fall colors, you'll see it adds a lot of this kind of new pink salmon color to the whole thing, which you may or may not want for your design. Obviously this messes up the coloring of the whole thing, but I actually like that it adds a lot more detail in the mountain background. So earlier when I was looking through the different color lookups, this one stood out to me as just adding another color, kind of adding to the whole design without taking too much away from the base layer that we started with. So let's close up our finishing folder. You can see a before and after our finishing effects. And we can see what we started with, just our original photo. Take off that mask just to see before and after of the whole thing. Start off with this nice shot, Ben Yacht, Antoine Davis, Marquez Brownlee in front of a nice mountain range. And just by adding some gradient maps and text, we went from this to this. Let me know in the comments if you know what you would call this type of poster design. I don't know if it's a typography poster, gradient map poster. Maybe there's not a name for it. You can also let me know in the comments if you have a good name suggestion. Thanks for watching as always, and let me know if you have any questions.